Ever since we got out of the new 2018 Camry, we've been looking forward to checking out its arch nemesis, the also new 2018 Honda Accord. Now few cars can claim the success of the Accord, with over 11 million units sold over the last 42 years or 9 generations. This is the all new 10th generation, and it represents a fundamental rethink for a market that's moving away from sedans. As always, this review will cover all trims of the gas-powered Accord, not just this loaded touring trim. So let's go ahead and see if the new Accord beats not just the Camry, but all of the others. We would like to specially thank Gates Honda for allowing us to come out and film this review. If you would like to find out more information about their dealership and large inventory of Hondas, then check the video description for both their physical and web addresses. Before we start, I want to note one thing about the trims. You can get the upgraded engine on several trims, but it has no impact on the rest of the equipment, except in the case of the Sport. On that model with the 2 liter engine, it adds the EX as standard equipment, which is why it's being treated as a separate trim. Every 2018 Accord gets this nice looking key fob, though only the EX and above get smart entry on the doors. Additionally, those same trims also get remote start. Before we check out the brand new interior and exterior, we're first going to see what's new under the hood. The fundamental rethink of the Accord starts under the hood. Honda has opted to ditch naturally aspirated engines and go all in on turbos. This is the mainstream engine, a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder, producing 192 horsepower and 192 pound feet of torque. It comes standard on every trim level and is paired with a continuously variable transmission. However, the more exciting option is the new two liter turbo four, which replaces last year's V6. It's basically a detuned version of the Civic Type R's engine and in this application it makes 252 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. This engine is optional on Sport, EXL, and Touring, and it's also paired to Honda's new 10-speed automatic transmission. There is one other transmission, and surprisingly it's a 6-speed manual. It will be offered only on the Sport trim as a no-cost option. Now moving on to the very important fuel economy numbers, the Accord is near the top of the class, but not quite class leading. Nonetheless, a rating of 30 city, 38 highway, 33 combined for the 1.5 CVT represents a nice improvement over last year. Fuel economy figures for the 2 liter engine have not yet been released, but we'll add them to the description when they are.
Well that sums up the big changes under the hood, so now let's check out the redesigned exterior. With crossovers eating into mid-sized sedan territory, it was clear Honda needed to spice things up, and they did. Up front you have a much larger and more aggressive nose, shaped kind of like a U. The bottom part, all the way up to the headlights, is always black, but if you get the sport the top chrome part will also be turned black. Coming to the headlights, they have gone decidedly upscale. Every trim actually gets these LED low beams and LED daytime running lights. But as a touring exclusive, we also have LED high beams. LED fog lamps are also included on all but the very base LX trim. As you would expect, there are several different wheels across the trims. On this Touring, we have the large 19-inch machine-finished alloys with gray inserts. Both the 1.5 and 2.0-liter sports also have 19-inch wheels, but with a more dramatic design and black inserts. Finally, the other trims have 17-inch alloys, with a plain design on the LX and a more exciting one for the EXs. For brakes, they are 11.5 inch ventilated disc in the front, and 11.1 inch solid disc in the rear. They are a little bit larger on the 2.0T models. For the mirrors, they are body colored and power adjusting on all trims. EX and up adds heating. You also probably noticed the missing bulge for the lane watch system and that's because it's been replaced with blind spot monitoring. Honda nicely includes this on the EX and up. To my eyes, the side might just be the biggest departure from the previous generation. Honda has made the hood and the rest of the car appear long and low, which gives it proportions more akin to a rear-wheel drive luxury sedan. I also want to mention the adaptive damper system that you get on the Touring only. It has several modes which we'll talk about on the inside. Moving on to safety, there are no official ratings to speak of yet. However, the Honda Sensing suite of active safety technologies is now standard on every trim. It includes forward emergency braking, lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, traffic sign recognition, and auto high beam headlights. The new window kink reminds me of BMW. The Accord's fuel tank size has decreased 2.4 gallons this year to 14.8, but with better fuel economy, the range is still good at 488 miles for the 1.5 liter CVT model. Our Touring drops it to 459 and the manual to 444 miles. The 1.5 liter uses regular fuel. The rear of the Accord draws a lot of inspiration from the Civic, especially with the tapered roofline. The biggest feature of the rear styling is definitely the taillights. 
they have a bizarre shape that reminds me of a crocodile head. But they are LED across all trims. Down below, you'll find dual horizontal exhausts. They come on the Sport, Touring, and all 2-liter models. Well that wraps up the exterior styling, so now let's check out the luxurious new interior. First looking inside the new Accord, you won't see even a tiny resemblance to the outgoing model. Now there aren't all that many different colors to choose from, only black, gray, or ivory, determined by what trim and exterior color you pick. This is the ivory leather, and the EXL also gets leather. Both the sport trims get cloth seats with black leather trim, and the others get just plain cloth. Coming to the door trim, it also has a new luxurious look. Everywhere your arm might touch is covered in padded leather. And even the upper portion is soft touch. What you'll find in the middle is some reasonably realistic fake wood trim. The window switches are new, and the front two windows are one touch. You also find two person memory for the EXL and touring trims. Honda nicely includes this 12-way power adjusting driver's seat on all but the base trim. It even has 4-way lumbar. The leather quality feels Acura great, and as a matter of fact, the seat design reminds me of the luxury brand. Now the cabin is another example of the fundamental shift. What used to be dramatic, swoopy, and overstyled is now smooth and classy looking. And the materials have also taken a step forward. The entire upper dash is all soft touch plastic with a really nice graining. And through the center part you have more of that faux wood. The lower areas are hard touch as expected, but you do get the unexpected feature of leather on the center tunnel. And of course everything fits together great, like the typical Honda. On every trim, push the button to start. When you do, a single 8 inch display will fire up which replaces the old two-screen system. It's hard to tell right off the bat, but these gauges are quite unique. The left side is actually a high-res LCD screen while the right side is a traditional analog speedo. The cool thing is that you can customize what's displayed from a really long list of options. And it's impressive to note that Honda gives you this on every trim. A lot of luxury cars don't have setups as nice. In addition to that, the Touring also throws in a heads-up display. It too has several different modes you can put it in like navigation functions, for example. It's very clear and has easy adjustability. All Accords have electric rack and pinion power steering. 
You also find this leather wrapped steering wheel on all but the LX and EX. On this side you have controls for the gauge display, phone, and voice. And on the other side adaptive cruise control and safety systems. Additionally, the Touring receives rain sensing wipers and also paddles. Moving on to storage, the Accord again excels. In the center console, you have a sliding tray. And underneath it is a deep and spacious area. You also have a USB and a 12 volt outlet. Up front, there's a covered area to hide all your junk. The floor of this bin is actually a Qi wireless charging pad, but you'll need a compatible device. Otherwise, use these connections. So the shifter situation is identical to the TLX, meaning with the base powertrain you get this standard shifter, but with the 2.0T you get an electronic one. You can shift manually, but only with the paddles. When you shift into reverse, a standard backup camera will appear, with dynamic guidelines across all trims. You can also select between three different views, but there is no bird's eye camera available. Moving back, we have two additional drive modes, Econ for more efficiency and a Sport for a little bit of sharpening. And further back is your electronic parking brake and brake hold feature. Now moving on to the climate control, things have been vastly simplified. This is dual zone automatic climate, and it actually comes standard on every trim level. I really like the layout, it reminds me a lot of Audi. Overall it's ergonomically sound and good looking. You also find the seat controls over here, which are three stage ventilation only on this touring but three-stage heated on the EX and up. Now let's take a listen to the 450-watt 10-speaker premium audio system. Sound quality is pretty good for the class. Now let's take a quick look at the infotainment system. This is an all new version of the Honda Link system, with shortcut buttons on the side and physical volume and tune knobs. This system is based on Android, and as you can see, it responds as quickly as a tablet would. Starting with navigation, we have the newest Garmin-based layout. It actually supports pinch-to-zoom, though it's not the smoothest I've seen. This comes on only the EXL and Touring. Up next, we have Phone. You can view all of your contacts automatically synced over from your connected smartphone. Moving on to audio, we are currently connected to the standard Bluetooth and can play, pause, and skip tracks straight from this screen. And speaking of Bluetooth, the Accord Touring comes with NFC pairing. All you have to do is take your Android phone and bump this spot on the dash. The phone will then automatically pair without you having to go through any menus or whatnot. This is separate from the standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay that you also have. For that, you'll have to connect to one of the USB ports. 
The last thing worth mentioning is the new Wi-Fi hotspot, which comes on only the Touring. It's powered by AT&T, and it does require an extra subscription. That's all I'm going to cover here, but we do have a dedicated Honda Link tutorial if you want to learn more about the system. A link to that is provided in the video description. Up here we have a frameless glass auto dimming mirror with Homelink Universal remotes on EXL and Touring. Honda also nicely includes a moonroof on EX and above. It's a nice moonroof, but you can't get a panoramic one like you can on the Camry. So overall, the cabin of the Accord has exceeded my expectations. Everything in here looks and feels a class above, with nice materials, a sophisticated design, and a lot of technology. And it does all that without sacrificing traditional Accord characteristics. So all in all, great job. The seat does move back for an easier exit. Now I'll hand it off to Mason to finish things off. Materials on the rear door trim are luxurious just like the front. The elbow rest and the area above it are all padded leather, plus you have some more wood grain accents. The button for the Touring's heated rear seats is also located over here. It is three stages, and below it is your power window. Space in the new Accord is definitely a strong suit, since it's rated at 40.4 inches of legroom and 37.3 inches of headroom. That bests the all-new Camry, and I imagine the rest of the class too. The seats themselves look luxurious, and once you sit in them, you'll find that they're extremely comfortable. In the center area, you'll find vents on EX trims and above but you won't find any outlets or anything. Honda does give you a large center armrest with some cup holders inside. Up top there's a light, a good headliner, and an assist grip. Now like I mentioned, the Accord boasts one of the most spacious back seats in the class. I can stretch completely out. Sliding over, even with the seat scooted all the way back, I have tons of space. So overall, the new Accords rear seat is definitely impressive. The features, comfort, and space make me think I'm in a German luxury sedan, and I imagine that just about any passenger will be more than happy back here. To open up the trunk, just grab the button underneath the lid. That'll give you a massive 16.7 cubic foot of capacity, which I imagine is another area where the Accord is class leading. The trunk opening itself is also quite wide. The seats themselves fold 60-40 split on all but the base LX trim.
To complete the folding process, just pull down on the seat. They do fold flat. The passenger seat is four-way power adjusting on EXL and Touring. I really like the faux wood trim, and other materials are top notch. The glove box is dampened and quite spacious. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed watching one of the first in-depth reviews on the all-new 2018 Honda Accord. Stay watching for a quick look at the pricing, and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons below. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.